Uh, roll. Let's begin by taking the roll, Madam Secretary. Representative Holsclaw? Here. Representative Love? Here. Representative Manis? Here. Representative Shaw? Here. Representative Williams? Here. Representative Wright? Here. Chairman Crawford? Present. Chairman Rudd? Here. Chairman Rudd, you have a quorum. Thank you. Um, thank you all for being here today. Um, of course, my name is um, Tim Rudd. I'm um, delighted to be chairman of the committee again this year. Uh, joining us each week are some individuals that are instrumental in this committee's operation, and I want to thank all of them for being here. And they are my assistant and uh, executive assistant, Tricia Higna, uh, research analyst Nathan Witt. Our um, other research analyst is Elizabeth Ashwood when she helps us. And legislative attorney Doug Garrett. Also, our clerk is here, uh, Connor Linkowitzki. Mikowski, I'm getting close. <laughs> and the Sergeant of Ours, Landon Deal. Thank you, as always. I ask members to introduce themselves. If we can begin uh, with uh, Representative Shaw, or Love, excuse me. I didn't, I can't, it's hard for me to see through this plexiglass. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and good morning, members. Uh, good afternoon, I'm sorry. Harold Love, uh, State Representative, House District 58 here in Nashville, Tennessee. My first time on this committee, but certainly looking forward to uh, looking at some good legislation and, and voting on. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Johnny Shaw, District 80, West Tennessee. Uh, basically a rural district for the most part. Uh, there are some parts of Jackson that's become urban, but mostly rural. Uh, spending my 21st year here in the legislature, First time on this committee, looking forward to it, looking forward to joining and not only uh, serving, but learning a lot about election laws. Thank you. And I'm, um, I say, I'm Tim Rudd. I represent the 34th District of Southwest Murfreesboro, South Smyrna, and Southwest Rutherford County. Chairman Crawford. I'm Representative John Crawford. I represent the 1st District, which is the very northeast tip of the state. And we are just the most beautiful place in Tennessee, in my opinion. And I'm happy to serve on this committee. Uh, <clears throat> I'm Dave Wright, uh, District 19. That's the rural east side of Knox County. And I'm really glad to be on this committee. Uh, Representative Ryan Williams from House District 42, Cookville, uh, Baxter and Allgood there in Putnam County. Um, I know a little bit about election law from doing it wrong, probably. But um, <laughs> anyways, uh, pleasure to be here. I'm Eddie Manis from District 18. That is kind of the middle of West Knoxville and then uh, Northwest Knoxville. And I am, I think I'm the only freshman uh, on this committee, I mm -hmm. think. So I'm uh, eager to uh, <clears throat> serve and learn, and I'm happy to be on this. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Are there uh, any announcements or personal orders before we begin? Oh, host call. You're, you sat down there. Thank you, Chairman. <laughs> I'm glad you did recognize. I'm, I'm short. I realize that. But, uh, <laughs> but I am from uh, District 4, which is near Mr. Crawford up there. We do live in probably the biggest part of the state for sure. Uh, with the lakes and mountains and hills and valleys and green. So have um, a husband of five daughters. So I've got gray hair and it's getting grayer. Uh, but uh, enjoy it. Maybe I'll get recognized on this committee so I can learn some. Thank you, Chairman. <laughs> well, you're, you're so shy and quiet, I forgot you were down there. Apologize for that. Are there any announcements or personal orders? Yes, Representative Love. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, certainly want to uh, join my colleague, uh, Chairman Williams, uh, in acknowledging and thanking the members uh, for all their outpouring of love this time last year when our neighborhoods were hit with the, uh, the tornado that came through uh, so many parts of the state of Tennessee last year. And so I just want to thank the members for your support last year. I know we're starting to rebuild some. I know that his area is also starting to rebuild. And so I just want to take that moment out to recognize on this day last year, of course, all of our lives were disrupted, but our communities are coming back, and we're grateful for the opportunity to say thank you all. Thank you. Uh, Representative Manis and, um, and Wright, and did, um, let's see, Representative Manis, I believe you were next. They said they got your name up. What? Maybe it was Ryan. They got 
Please. Okay. This is the handsome corner down here, but uh, <laughs> I just want to reiterate what uh, my good friend um, Pastor Love said. It is uh, it is a one year anniversary day. Nineteen of the twenty five lo uh, lives lost in Tennessee a year ago today. Uh, we're in my district, and uh, we are like his district, uh, rebuilding uh, and getting through the hurt um, and mourning when need to. Uh, but just makes you know and understand your community better than you thought you did. And uh, it's great, uh, it's great to serve. And so uh, I have had several members reach out, some of which are on this committee, and just <clears throat> just remembering that difficult time. And so, really appreciate uh, all all the fellow members and staff here, and how great they've been to us over the last year. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Rep. Cindy Wright. Would you also? Okay. Yeah, uh, I would ask, because uh, both I and the staff are having somewhat of trouble in these cramped quarters, this plexiglass. Um, I apologize if we miss somebody. Just kind of raise your hand above the glass. Maybe there is a lot of shadowing. I'm seeing multiple people when I look down through there. <laughs> All right. Um, I'd like to begin today by sharing some organizational information, since it's our first meeting we're required to do. Um, I'll read some of, our, um, some of our policies that's been implemented. Some of them are new this year for all the committees. We, plan, we will plan on meeting each Wednesday at 1230 in this hearing room unless otherwise um, changed by the clerk's office or my office. I would also like to discuss a few rules on the committee. Due to COVID-19 restrictions, bill notices and proposed amendments for all committees must now be submitted electronically. All bills to be heard in committee must be placed on notice via the House portal by 3.30 on Wednesday preceding the hearing date. Amendments for our committees must be filed by 10 a.m. on Tuesday. Amendments must be emailed to the House local government mailing list. Amendments must be signed and will only be accepted from the member's legislative email address or the legislative email address of their legislative assistant. If substantial amendment is not timely filed with the committee, the bill will have to be reset to the calendar in order to the amend for the amendment to be considered or accepted by a vote of two-thirds of the committee. Uh, bills passed by a subcommittee will automatically be placed on the next available full committee calendar unless the committee receives a written request from the sponsor to set another hearing date. Uh, on testimony, testimony on bills may be allowed at the chairman's discretion and will be limited depending on time available. Uh, this committee will no longer allow testimony that has not been requested to, in 24 hours in advance. Um, a two-thirds vote of members present is necessary to approve a call for the question if objection is made. Any motion to reconsider a committee action on a bill must come from a member who voted in the prevailing side and a majority of the members eligible to vote must vote in favor. Uh, roll call votes must be requested by the bill sponsor prior to any vote being taken or by any show of hands of three members before a vote is taken. The chairman reserves the right to call for a roll call vote at any time. Members who wish to have their vote recorded on or a voice vote should notify the clerk of their vote. Members may not request a change of the vote after the vote is taken and should notify the clerk of that change. Um, the, chair, the chairman uh, intends to maintain decorum of the committee. There will no longer be a running debate. Debate should always be on the topic of the bill. Personal attacks will not be tolerated. Uh, members who appear before the committee will, will maintain appropriate dress per house rules. No clothing or props or personal displays of political messaging will be allowed whatsoever. Members should turn cell phones off or to vibrate while, the, while in committee and limit the phone use when uh, hearing testimony. We ask that members of the committee and the audience please step out of the hearing room if you need to take a call. Per House rules, no member of the committee, legislature or staff may record a video or live stream while the committee is in session. Almost done. Due to COVID-19 restrictions, we must limit audience capacity to the available seating only. No standing audience members will be allowed. By rule, a bill may be calendared three times in a given committee, after which it shall be set to the special calendar to be heard along with the final calendar of that committee. Bills not heard due to time restraint will be rolled to the next available calendar. This will not count towards the three calendar limit. Sponsors who wish to take their bills off notice should notify the committee chairman in writing prior to scheduling a hearing. 
um, the scheduled hearing. If changing a charter, legislation must be accompanied by a two-thirds resolution by the governing body it affects. A copy of these committee rules and policies will be made available to the membership following today's meeting if requested. Uh, this should wrap up our organizational business and let's take up legislation before us. First on the agenda is House Bill 0909 by Cassida and that has been taken off notice. Number two is HB 0597 by Representative Clemens and he is in the room. Do I hear a motion and a second? We have a motion and a second. Representative, please proceed to explain your bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee. And first, let me say, I know uh, I don't envy this committee. Y'all have a very important job to do this year. I know this is gonna be a, a committee with a lot of bills before it on important issues for voting rights. And so uh, I wish you the best of luck in this session. Uh, I come before you today uh, introducing House Bill 597. I've introduced this bill past few years and this bill is pretty straightforward. What this piece of legislation does is it allows any registered Tennessee voter to vote absentee for any reason after providing certification as to their identity uh, in the application for such a ballot. So essentially it's no excuse absentee mail-in voting. Requires the absentee ballots to be counted uh, for the election in which the ballots cast and deletes the requirement that a voter who registers by mail must vote in person the first time. That's currently in law. If you register to vote by mail, you gotta show up and vote uh, in person the first time. This bill also um, allows uh, college students to use their state or public school issued college ID to vote for purposes of compliance with our state's voter ID laws. That is the bill and I am happy to answer any questions you have. Are there any questions from the committee on the bill? No, seeing no, no questions or hands, I want to make sure because of these shadows, okay. Um, seeing, I guess seeing none, are we ready to vote on the bill? All right, uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Nay. Okay. Uh, the nays have it, sorry the bill fails. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Let's see here. And I need to, the next two bills are my bills. I need to pass the um, gavel and the book. This the gavel. You have the information to Chairman Crawford. And Mr. Chairman, I'll do this from my seat, if that's okay. If there's no objection, I'll, the presenter will present from the seat. Seeing none, you're recognized on House Bill 500. Motion on the bill, second. Thank you. This is the, um, as you recall, I think just about the entire House voted for this. In 2017, one of the first bills I passed was the Freedom of Speech Act that allowed uh, candidates to, um, that cities and HOAs could not restrict putting signs up of a certain size on their own property they own and maintain. That's been very popular. The legal description in that bill said that uh, general election, which under the law means any election unless it's a special election. But since we use the word general, some cities have been claiming that only means November and August. So we're just dropping the word general from this. That's the only change to the law and just leaving elections so that it clarifies it and doesn't confuse anyone. So that's all the bill does. It leaves everything else intact with the legislation. We're just dropping the word general. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for explaining your bill. Is there any questions? Representative Shaw, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, if the sponsor of the legislation could tell me, because I'm a little bit unfamiliar with, I guess it's been a while, tell me what does the whole bill do now? I know you're dropping that term, but what does the bill actually do? It sits like, a, it states that if it's on, whether it's in an HOA or a, a non-OHA, or it's being administered by a city, that all uh, voters have a right to display their signs at a minimal square footage on residential, and I think it's four before on commercial. I forgot the same, uh, may have been four before on commercial, 
and uh, up to uh, four by eight, but if they, the city's gonna go over that, it just guarantees their right up to four by four on residential and four by eight, and, and a city or HOA cannot limit the number of signs you have on your property. Now, in an HOA, it's a little different than in the average. It says on land that you own and maintain. So if the HOA maintains your front lawn, you can't put it there. Uh, that we let the HOA's guidelines and covenants cover that, and you can't. This doesn't allow you to put it in the the, uh, the common areas. That's again up to the locals. But if you do have, say, a condo, you can put it on your door and your window, or in a fenced-in area that you maintain. That's what we guarantee that a minimal. And a lot of cities were limiting to three signs only, including real estate signs, and that was it. Well, you may have 10 races, and you want to express your freedom of speech on those 10 races. This guarantees you you can put at least one of each candidate on there. And if the city restricts it to just one due to public safety, now the city can still, like, you can't put, like, a 4 8 or 4 8 just right on the, on the corner blocking the view of traffic. They still can... can um, limit the, uh, like, put it behind utility poses or something for public safety. Mm -hmm. So that's basically what the right, it guaranteed every uh, ten, every Tennessee the right to display their political signs, and they were allowed a minimal of uh, protection on the size of the sign on residential and commercial property. Right. Thank you, sir. Representative Williams, you're recognized. Thank you, Chairman. Chairman, uh, the city code will pass an ordinance uh, limiting uh, the size uh, of signs, not the number, um, meaning they, they didn't, uh, for residential property. Commercial property, there's no, uh, so would your bill affect their local ordinance? The bill, of course, this doesn't change it. What's already in current law on, uh, um, on any non-HOA property, uh, the, the residential single family home can put up to guaranteed by state law at a minimum four before sign. Okay, and so are you suggesting that the the city of Cookville's ordinance limiting them, I think it's 24 by 36 or smaller, is against state statute? Yes. Okay, thank you. Unless, unless the, uh, like on HOA, because this was not retroactive, um, if it was, if an HOA was in effect prior to this law passing, they're grandfathered in. We can't tell them what to do. But all going forward, or if you amend your covenant restrictions of an HOA since the law passed in 2017, they would have to adapt the new law. You're recognized. Thank you. So the Homer Association would, by that example, and I'm interpreting, uh, by that example, have greater control over their property uh, than the than the than the city would over their own ordinance. Well, they do anyway because they're considered a private agreement, and it's really outside the grounds of most city ordinances. Cities don't go in HOAs because it's a private property agreement between the property owners. Okay. You recognize? Yes. Uh, just to the sponsor, I, I I don't think I have a problem with your bill. I I'm probably going to spend the the next few, several days finding that, regardless of what happens here. But I'm I'm going to be present, not voting until I can sort it out until we get to full committee. But thank well, you. Well, again, this bill, uh, Mr. Chairman, this this bill only removes the word general. The existing law it doesn't change other than general. It's all those rules and regulations are still in place. Okay, thank you. All right, Chairman Holtzclaw, you're recognized. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, it's kind of like uh, Representative Williams up there because our city ordinances, they limit it to your standard yard sign, and they were pulling them up. So, you know, that'd be good precedence, four by four, and it overrides it. Uh, but, yeah, they limit it to number and size. So we'll be real interested in seeing who pre yeah. what takes precedent over that. Thank you. And uh, like I said, the uh, since 2017, that's been in effect. This isn't putting that in place now, that was already in effect. I'm only taking the word general out. Representative Shaw. Thank you. I, I was trying to go, get all this wrapped around my head, and I, I really would like to hear from my city folks on this. I'm going to be present, not voting till I hear from them. I may pick up late and vote if it go out, but I'm going to be present, not voting till I talk to them about it. Okay, but uh, I'm, I'm trying to let everybody know we're not putting limitations on the cities or HOAs right now. That's already in state law. 
we're only taking the word general out right now. Anything else is existing. We're not changing anything else in existing state law. Any more questions? Previous question. We've had a call for the question. We're ready to vote. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. If you want to be recorded as a no or a pass, please let the uh, clerk know. And motion carries. Next on the agenda, we have House Bill 501 by Representative Rudd, Chairman Rudd. Let's see, do we have a motion? Motion. Got a proper motion and second. Chairman Rudd, you are recognized on House Bill 501. Thank you. This is the same exact legislation we passed through the House last year, but due to COVID-19 and the Senate not taking it up, uh, it never got took it up in the Senate. This was uh, this passed the House uh, 87 to 5, and um, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, everybody on the committee that was here voted for it. Um, this is the reporting and transparency reform that everybody has kind of been asking for. Uh, this legislation was passed by the House in 2020, but was not taken up, as I had said. The purpose is to streamline campaign finance reporting by eliminating the needlessly cumbersome pre-primary and pre-general election periods and election year. Right now, we have to report six times. This only makes it uh, quarterly, so we will report four times in election years. Um, the other component of the legislation is requiring a full disclosure of all donations. Currently, donations of um, 100 or under are not required to be d disclosed, and uh, this would make it uh, um, fully transparent of all of our donations would be reported. Any and again, questions? it passed the House 87 to 5. Any questions from the members? Seeing, questions. seeing none, we are ready to vote. Question has been called. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Bill moves on to local full. Let me make a correction before I pass the gavel over. I didn't do it a while ago, uh, but f the first bill, House Bill 500, will be moving on to local government committee. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairman uh, Crawford, for taking over. Um, and... Um, I believe the last, uh, the last bill, um, it also moves on to local government committee on 501. Hmm. That's, okay. And um, let's see, before we close, are there any other announcements or personal orders from the membership? Seeing none, uh, this concludes our meeting today. I want to thank all of you for being here, and the uh, meeting is adjourned.